What does it take for an everyday cyclist to break through a plateau? Let's take a look at one rider's complete season to find out. Meet John. Like many cyclists, John has to juggle being a new father, working full time, and having a life outside of cycling. He had been self-coaching and using standard training plans, putting them together himself, but he really wanted to make sure that each session counted towards something bigger, so there was an overall strategy in his training. And he wanted to perform well in road, and gravel races, he wanted to increase his endurance power and raise his threshold. And to get there, he needed a better way to train. So he made one decision that changed everything. But what was that decision? I'm biased here, but of course he joined Semi Pro Cycling and he started using an adaptive training system to hit his goals for the 2024 season. And in this video, I'll break down the exact training system he used, the progress he made, and whether he hit his ambitious goals or not. Before I get into the details of John's journey, let me quickly explain the different levels of cyclists that I've come across in my 12 years of coaching and what kind of development and progressive elements that they each need to maximize each level and reach performance at every stage of the journey. Level one is beginner. Obvious, yes, but the experience, it really is the first year of the sport. So your goal here is to build a consistent habit of training. And it really is, you just want to find out how you can train regularly. At this stage, any form of riding helps you improve and the focus should be getting out consistently and learning how your body feels during different rides. The development here, as you build a routine, you can start adding in extra sessions or extending sessions slightly, but the key is to stay consistent. For example, if you're a beginner like John was in his first year, almost any ride will help you get stronger. It's all about building that habit of showing up. And level two is intermediate. And the experience here really, it's two to three years in the sport, and the goal is to improve endurance and power. And your training approach, as you gain experience, it's time to focus on increasing the duration of your rides. You'll want to work on building the endurance and learning to pace yourself more effectively during longer efforts. The development here is where you start to incorporate more specific training, like adaptive intervals, adjusting intensity or duration based on how you're feeling on that day. So for example, John in here is two years plus into his cycling journey, which puts him into the intermediate category. And this means his training was more focused on extending ride duration and learning how to pace intervals to maximize time spent on the bike. Level three, advanced. And this is where your experience is three plus years in the sport. Your goal is to improve specificity and intensity. And your training approach is where you need to focus on high quality, intense training. Volume matters here a lot, but improvements come from specific and intense sessions. You have more flexibility overall in how you progress, but it's important to tailor your intervals and training sessions based on real-time feedback from your body. John, being just over two years into his cycling, is classified by me as an intermediate rider. He needed a more personalized plan, one that wasn't quite one-on-one -on -one coaching, but gave him enough structure to keep improving. And one of the key areas we focused on was learning how to pace intervals based on how he felt each day. And some days he could push harder and the other days he pulled back to allow for more recovery. Here's how his 2024 season progressed. In phase one, we focused on building power and endurance. So we started in the end of January. Before that, he had done November, December, and January as a build-up period where he was extending his endurance capacity. Knowing that he had his first race on the 30th of March and then his first big race on April 20, I wanted to step through the process and continue building intensity through that period. Moving into the first focus block of training, which was VO2 max training in February. Over the next four weeks, we worked his VO2 max and neuromuscular power, increasing his VO2 max from 4.9 liters per minute to 5.02 liters per minute. So a 2.45 increase. A mini win here was that his Pmax, his maximum power output also increased slightly, showing small but steady progress. Now, sub-threshold work was in March, and by the end of March, John's time to exhaustion, his TTE, the time in theory that he could sit at his threshold, improved by nearly 6%, and his stamina, performance beyond one hour, increased from 73 to 80%. In phase two, he did racing and anaerobic power, so from April to June. But really, at this point, you wanna make a decision as to what isn't working for you, meaning where are you lacking in fitness, what do you need to work on, and what's going to be useful for the race that you're going to be doing. These opening races were gravel races, and he hadn't done a lot of neuromuscular work, and he hadn't done a lot of short-term power work, and that's where 
I felt he needed that in order to do things in a race, like attacking, chasing on after someone attacks, hitting small hills with strength, but being able to recover from them as well. Ian John entered his first race of the season. Despite losing a water bottle early on and battling cramps, he finished second out of 150 riders, which is a huge improvement considering the circumstances. He hit a peak one minute, a peak one hour, and a peak one and a half hours. So the mini win for John here was John saw his TTE increase again during training, hitting new PRs in his weekly rides. And then we did an anaerobic block. So in April, we focused on increasing his functional reserve capacity. And after three weeks, his functional reserve capacity rose by nearly 2%. Not massive gains, but enough to give him an edge in sprint finishes. We moved into a muscular endurance block in May. Here, he worked on improving his torque and he saw a 14% improvement in his 10 minute torque numbers, helping him power through tough climbs and longer efforts. In phase three, he's peaking and refining. From July through to September, we worked on lactate clearance starting in July, and John's main goal was to increase his threshold. But after a tough block of lactate clearance training, we only saw a slight improvement where his threshold peaked for the season at 356 watts. His VO2 max focus in August, we returned to VO2 max training for four weeks where he reached his peak VO2 max of 73 milliliters per minute per kilogram, a 1.96% increase. Though the gains were small, it showed that now he was starting to reach his season peak. And a mini win here in mid-August, John set a new five minute PR, pushing 439 watts for an 8% improvement from earlier on in the year. So did John reach his goals? Yes. He did, so let's recap. <laughs> Critical power, John saw a solid improvement, jumping from 321 watts to 356 watts. That's a 10.9% increase for the season, and this was a significant boost for his longer rides. Endurance power, John improved his durability in races, especially in longer endurance events. So his five minute power after 2,500 kilojoules of work increased from 4.5 watts per kilogram to 5.9 watts per kilogram. That's a 31% jump. And his four hour endurance power doubled from 1.6 watts per kilogram to 3.2 watts per kilogram. That's a 100% improvement. In summary, John's journey from a self-coached cyclist to a more structured, system-driven athlete was filled with ups and downs. He faced tough races, a new baby, and a busy life, but by staying consistent and making small adjustments, he was able to hit some major personal milestones. It's riders like John that inspired me to put my best thinking together and build a system that anyone can access. It's called Team Semi Pro, and you can join Team Semi Pro for $32 every four weeks, or $16.58 a month if you pay yearly, where you'll access 53 training plans, 307 instruction workouts, and Training Peaks Premium with email support and a one time coach consultation to get you all set up and ready to go. Click on the link in the description and make every session count.